Today's Take 5 with the Saints, April the 2nd, is James Lloyd Breck. Breck, known as the Apostle or the Missionary to the Wilderness, the American Wilderness, that is. One of the founders of Neshota House Seminary, which we mentioned a couple of weeks ago with another one of our saints, James DeCoven. But Breck was also a priest who set up missions from Wisconsin and Minnesota and the upper north or in the upper Midwest, what we would call the Midwest today, all the way out to California. And as such, became known as someone who pioneered not only the pioneering literal spirit of American frontierism and the Episcopal Church, but this adventuresome and missionary spirit that became prominent within the 19th century Episcopal Church for bringing the church to far-flung places both domestically and across the globe. Our scripture that goes with Breck's feast day comes out of Joshua chapter 24, verses 14 through 18. Joshua said, Now therefore revere the Lord, and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. Now if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt out of the house of slavery and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us along all the way that we went and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites, who lived in the land. Therefore we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. James Lloyd Breck and Joshua had a similar missionary spirit, but the difference between the two stories is while Joshua was being called to lead the Israelites in the promised land, driving out the peoples that were there. James Lloyd Breck was far from that. He was, like many of the missionaries that we have seen on our calendar so far, was very tolerant and very willing to welcome the culture and the language of the native peoples of America that he encountered as he brought the gospel to them. So he was born in Philadelphia in 1818, far from a missionary outpost at that point, and was supported in his upbringing as a priest by a guy that, I'm just giving you a preview, you're going to hear in a few days because his day comes up, a a priest named William Augustus Muhlenberg, who was part of a revival, so to speak, of the Episcopal Church in the early 19th century. Breck was a disciple of Muhlenberg, attending his school in Flushing, New York, before entering the University of Pennsylvania. But as he was studying to become a priest, in fact, before even then, at the age of 16, he made the commitment in his heart to become a missionary. He attended General Theological Seminary in New York City and then went out to Neshota, Wisconsin with several of his colleagues where he founded both what is now known as Neshota House Seminary but also a religious community at Neshota Community which became in essence a missionary church from which Breck and his colleagues went out to visit pioneers and settlers on the frontier obviously who were very far flung out in that point in the frontiers of Wisconsin, also to organize some ministry and mission among the natives who were still living in that area, and also to hold retreats, in fact, inviting clergy from other far-flung provinces in the Midwest to come and have retreats at the community at Neshota. Well, the community itself didn't last, although, of course, the seminary did, but it was a place that became a catalyst for further mission, at least from James Lloyd Breck. He moved on to St. Paul, Minnesota, and quickly from there organized what was called St. Columba's Mission for the Chippewa near St. Paul's at Gull Lake. This is where his ministry with the natives began to take great fruition. 
The mission ultimately did not survive, but the work it inspired did as it led to more missions across what is now the state of Minnesota. Breck, by the way, at this point, still a nice bachelor. He's doing all of this on his own. But in 1855, he marries and settles in Faribault, Minnesota, where he actually established a frontier cathedral for the Episcopal Church. And it was also from there that he founded yet another prominent seminary in the Episcopal Church, Seabury Divinity School, which then later merged with Western Theological Seminary and became Seabury Western Seminary, which which was based out of Chicago and was, up until about a decade ago, a very prominent seminary for the Episcopal Church. Unfortunately, it closed its doors sometime in the 2010s. From there, he moved out to California in 1867, where, again, inspired by the desire to start a mission with a theological school attached, settled schools in Benicia, California. The schools as a pattern, and this is a very important note for ministry, several things that he established did not last or failed, but the outcome of that work was that it inspired five parishes in the frontier of California to survive, and he continued to minister both to the settlers in California for the rest of his life and to the natives who were there. So as you can see, his title, The Apostle to the Wilderness, was very much earned in the fact that he covered an immense amount of geographical territory, and he worked tirelessly creating parishes, communities, and schools that helped to forge the presence of the Episcopal Church in these what were then far-flung outposts of American settlers. So, James Lloyd Breck, we remember his frontier spirit, but also his faithful service and willingness to try things that failed, but also to follow the spirit that allowed him to establish this wonderful ministry that has grown into a very vibrant Episcopal Church in the areas where he served to this day. Thanks for joining me. Our saint for tomorrow will be Bishop Richard of Chichester. Join me for that, and I will see you tomorrow. Take care.